So we're going to discuss the confusion matrix, which is a very central topic in remote sensing and classification processes and just geospatial science in general. Um, so our goal here is to understand what the confusion matrix is, what it's used for, and then the type of measures that we can derive from it. All right, so here's an example confusion matrix with multiple classes. So we have a total of six classes um, differentiated, and you can see that there are like 100 samples in each class. So the traditional way to structure confusion matrix in remote sensing is to have the column specified using the reference data and the rows specified using the classification output or, class or result. So this is what we're considering to be correct, and then the rows represent what the, what the prediction was. So as you can see, the, the cells that I, that I highlighted here in gray, those are the ones, those are the count of correct samples. So for example, 91 samples were forested and were correctly called forested. That means that everything that's off the diagonal is some type of error or confusion. So for example, four samples were forested, but they were incorrectly labeled as pasture or grass. Um, just looking at another example, 69 samples were, were cropland and were correctly classified as cropland, where 15 samples were crop but were incorrectly classified as pasture grass. So one thing nice about the confusion matrix is once it's generated, there's lots of metrics that you can calculate from it to get a sense of overall performance and also class level performance and where the sources of confusion lie. So in this example, um, we can see just by looking at the numbers that there seems to be some confusion between cropland and pasture. So we can see here, so 15 missed samples there, 11 missed samples there. Here we see some confusion between developed areas and water. Um, and in the areas where there aren't a lot of confusion. So for example, there's not a lot of confusion between like forest and, and developed, for example. Okay, so let's now talk about the type of metrics that we can derive from the error matrix. Okay, here's another error matrix. This is another example with only two classes. Here we're just simply differentiating forested and not forested. So here our diagonal represents again the correct classification and then the off diagonal are the incorrect classification. So in this example we can see that a larger number of not forested samples were incorrectly classified as forest as opposed to forested samples being incorrectly classified as not forced. Okay, so from the confusion matrix, you can generate a measure of overall accuracy, which is just simply the number of samples correctly classified, classified divided by the sum of the entire table. So um, just go back a few slides here. Um, so you would effectively take this diagonal, sum all those up, and then divide by the sum of the entire table. So that's the overall accuracy, but unfortunately that doesn't give us a lot of information about class level accuracy. So like where, what classes are being mapped well or not mapped well and which classes are being confused. So we can also calculate class level accuracies, but there are two kind of broad types. There are users accuracies and producers accuracies. Okay, so user's accuracy represents uh, 1 minus commission error, whereas producer's accuracy represents 1 minus omission error. And you can see some definitions for those two there. To be honest, I don't like these terms. I think they're confusion, confusing. I think it would make more sense just to call this like omission, omission error, commission error, or something. But uh, that's the terms that have been adopted. So effectively, these are calculated by either... Um, uh, comparison down the row or across the column. So in this table, for example, we can see that the producer's accuracies are calculated here at the bottom of each column and the user's accuracy are calculated across the row. So remember that producer's accuracy is a measure of omission error. So all these samples outside of the diagonal were supposed to be forested, but they were omitted from the forest class. So again, omission error. In contrast, these samples were in incorrectly included in the forest class, so that's commission error. So user's accuracy is, your, is, is related to commission errors, and producer's accuracy is um, related to omission error. Okay, 
Another metric that you can calculate from the confusion matrix is the kappa statistic, which is also known as Cohen's kappa, k hat, kappa. Um, the idea here is to adjust for random chance agreement. Um, so, for example, if you have a landscape that's 90% forested, you could call the entire area forest and be 90% accurate, but that would still not be that would not be a very useful classification. So, taking into account random ch chance agreement is a way to potentially deal with that. Um, so, how this is calculated, and we'll see this in this example, is um, fairly straightforward. So, let's look at calculating overall accuracy and kappa. So, overall accuracy, you, again, you're just taking the sum of the diagonal and dividing by the sum of the total. So, this table, these are the corrects, and then there's 600 samples. So we get a proportion of 0.828 or a percentage of 82.8%. Um, overall accuracy is sometimes reported as a proportion, sometimes as a percentage, but generally you see kappa um, uh, represented as a proportion as, as opposed to percentage. That's just kind of the standard. So how kappa is calculated is you take the number of correct and multiply by the number of samples and then you subtract from that the, uh, a factor. And then you subtract that same factor from the denominator, but instead of doing correct times total, you do total times total or total squared. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then this correction factor is just calculated using the row and column totals. So <clears throat> basically for each row and column, you, mul you multiply them together, so 100 times 113, and then you add each of those. <clears throat> Excuse me. So 100 times so 100 times 113 plus 100 times 100 plus 100 times 101 plus 100 times 83 plus 100 times 83 plus 100 times 120. So that's what creates this conversion there. And you see with uh, that adjustment, we see a decrease relative to overall accuracy down to 0 0.794. Um, here's an example with the second table. So again, the correct, 94 and 85 divided by the total. So there's our overall accuracy as a proportion and as a percentage. And then kappa, it's again the same thing, but we take our correct, multiply by total, subtract that factor, and then the total squared, subtract the factor. And again, the factor is 100 times 109 plus 100 times 91. And you can see the slight drop there relative to overall accuracy. It should be noted that the use of kappa has been called into question recently. Um, <clears throat> so um, generally, I would suggest not calculating kappa. However, it is kind of a standard, but hopefully it'll be replaced over time. Um, we're not going to get into the nuts and bolts of that here, but if you are interested, here's some papers you may want to read that discuss this issue in detail and offer some alternatives. For example, the death to kappa paper has suggested to replace kappa with these two measures, quantity disagreement and allocation disagreement. So effectively, this takes overall error and breaks it into two components. So difference in proportion of classes and then difference in the spatial allocation or location of the classes, which can be further broken into exchange and shift components. So if you take a quantity disagreement and allocation disagreement and add them together, you get overall disagreement or one minus or uh, basically um, one minus overall accuracy, so the the inverse there. Um, okay, so um, just a few notes. If you want are interested in playing around with this, calculating confusion matrices, you may want to look at this table that was made available by uh, Gil Pontius at Clark University. Um, it, it also calculates allocation quantity disagreement measures, so there's a link to it there. Um, you can also do a lot of this work in R. Um, we're, I have a, this video which or on this. We're not going to talk about it here, but if you're interested in how you would do this in R using like code, um, here's an example. Okay, so that was an introduction to the confusion matrix in uh, remote sensing for assessing classification accuracy.